start with Comet data. We use a sample superstore data. And while you download the table public, you can see these uh, sample superstore data will be stored in under my table's Raspberry here. So feel free to use these. Let's take a look of the older data before we start doing an analyze. Generally speaking, we will start with finding any missing value here. But these simple data, they have no missing value, so we don't have to use SQL or Excel try to think how we want to handle the missing value. The most common way of handle the missing value is we, if it's not so big, we will just exclude those data. Otherwise, we might consider to use the mean of that data set. Okay, let's take a look what this data include. First, we have row ID. It's kind of like index. It's unique. And then we have order ID, order day, shift day, shift no mode. All these are order information. And then here we come to the customer information. We will have customer ID, customer name, segment. All these are related to our customer. So when we want to analyze down to the customer level, we will use this quite often. And then here goes to uh, where this customer come from. That we have a country, you can see the logo here, the little earth tell you all these are geographic information. And then finally we come to the order related information. It's a product information. We will get a product ID, category, subcategory, order name, all these are the product information. And then finally, console the measures. Measures are the numbers in the table, which are the things you want to analyze. And uh, all, usually these numbers are continuous. So here is the sales, quantity, discount, and profit. All these numbers we will use later on. data, we can start to conduct our analyze. First, let's take a about uh, the process, how we can convert the business questions into the table language. First, what um, we start with the business questions, and the, each of the business questions, we can uh, change them into two categories. One is a dimension, the other one is measures. Measures are the values we actually want to understand or we want to evaluate. And usually those value measures are aggregate. And then the dimension is how we want to see these measures. It's like how we want to slice these values to see that in different angle. And then after understand the question and uh, all these attributes, then here comes what type is this question it is. And then we can choose the most suitable chart to demonstrate your finding. First, let's start with the easy one. For example, the most easy one is the, for example, sales by category. So here we have sales and category. Sales is the major, is the number we want to see, we want to understand. And the dimension is the angle we slice these cells. So, these kind of questions, we want to know the, is ranking like which category has the highest sales. And then we usually use these kind of uh, questions, demonstrate them by using the bar chart. Sales by category. Sales is the value we want to measure. So let's put it in the measure. And the dimension is a category. So we want to slice these cells by category. Let's begin. Let's simply drag the cells to the rows. Okay, and we want to slice it by category. Now you have the very first of the visualization. And second, let's go a little bit further. For example, I want to see the quantity by profit range. So in this case, in this case, your measure will be the quantity. Quantity is the things you want to measure, is the value. 
and the dimension is the way you want to slice this quantity will be the property range. And now, because here we don't have a what do they call property range, so we have to create it by using the bins. Okay, that's is a property, right? Property, click, create bins here. And the bins, they will suggest you the best thing they say is a 380. It gives you a minimum and the maximum value of this range. But for example, I want to see that at 500. Okay. And now you have your bins. Let's see how we do that. First is the quantity. So let's drag the quantity to the rows. And then I want the slices by the profit range. And now you can see here, the profit from zero to 500 have 30,000, 30,000 quantity. And you can see certain orders are actually losing profit. In this part, I wanna show you how to use line chart to demonstrate time series problem. I want to take a look of our yearly performance. And then, how, what does the yearly performance mean in the data language? Performance is the thing we want to measure. So, are the sales profit and quantity is the way we see how do we do well or not so well in our business. And then the yearly is the way we want to slice those data. So, will be our dimension. And this is a time series question. So here's two common charts we use to represent this kind of question. Let me show you how to use major values in line chart. I only want to take remain the sales quantity and profit. And then let's see that by order day. Okay. So we can see at the 2019 to 2020, there's a big jump for the sales. Let me put the major names here so you can see different color to the label. So this one is sales. There's a big jump from 2019 to 2020 for the sales and send us a profit. So I think it will be very interesting to take a look 2020's number and see how the change is going into the yearly performance. Now let's take a look how we can deeper understanding our performance in year 2020. There are several angles we can slice this data. We can either from the order dimension, customer dimension, or product dimension. What does that mean? For example, from the order information, we have order day and ship day. We can think about if the order day, the difference between order day and ship day is more than, for example, we set that 45 days, we consider that's a late shipment. Does the late shipment affect customers' loyalty and further affect their willingness to have a business with us? Or the customer take a, a first class or the second class shipping more will affect our profit or not? The other way we can take a look is into the customer level. For example, we can take a look at segment. If it's a consumer use, customer personal use has a better profit or not, or home office use has better profit or not, or which region, which areas customer give us more sales or more profit. Another dimension will be the product dimension. We can take a look which category or subcategory sales give us better profit. Then we should uh, more focus on the promotion or the sales force on this side. We want to know whether the sales increase is by the new customer or existing customer. So from this business question, we can see the major still the sales, but we want to down by the customer label, and then. How we want to slice this sales performance? We want the first order day of each customer so we can identify whether they are new customer or existing customer. Okay, 
Let me explain this result for you first before we start doing this. By doing that, we can see, okay, our sales begins at 2018, so 100% of customers are new, and then move to 2019. There are 22% of the sales is come from the new customer whose first order day is 2019. So we can see the big jump from 2019 to 2020. We can see the sales increase dramatically. So these two numbers together will be the sales from all customer. So we only have 9% of sales coming from the new customer. It's the calculate field. I want to know the first order day of each customer. So let's name it first. Order day. We use the fix function. Let's see uh, how it works. So we need a big and then we want to fix what? We want to aggregate what? We want to aggregate the customer label because each customer here. So we do the customer ID. It's the thing we want to aggregate. After we aggregate that, we want to see each customer's first order day. So it will be minimum how order day. Voila. And then well, let's do the sales. It's the thing we want to know, right? Sales or the day. Let's use the bar. Change it. Okay. Each year sales. Now, this is the total sales amount. So I want to know whether each cost the combination of the sales like this. Like here, it's totally from new customer 2018. And then 2019, we have 22% sales from the new customer who purchased first time in 2019. And then what can we do? Oh, the first order day to the color. Now we can see the different color of the first order day. And then you press the control key to get uh, to the label. So, and then I want to see the sales amount. So this is the sales amount of each year's sales. I want to change that to the percentage. So let's do the quick table calculation, percentage of total. You can see this part is not up to 100 because it's calculated using the across, so we have to change it. Let's change the compute using from across to down. Then this is we calculate by 2019-2020 sales and divided by the each year's combination of the sales from existing or new customer. All right. And then uh, this, uh, this format is really uh, ugly. So let's uh, format. 